going on guys it's jake back again for another youtube video today we're going to be going over my 2005 super forester xt but before we get started i want you guys to go ahead and subscribe drop a like and do whatever you can to help us grow the channel we would really appreciate it really trying to stay consistent and uh, get a lot of videos out this year so yeah anything you guys can do would really be appreciated but this car has a long long backstory so this video might be a little longer but if you guys just want to see the rolling clips that's going to be at the end and i'll put a timestamp right here so yeah let's get started this car basically started its life in georgia it was family owned ended up finding it on craigslist at the time i was in the market for a subaru forester uh, xt i was looking for a five-speed manual but came across this one in georgia it was an automatic they said that the car uh, had a bad turbo so I said, all right, I figured this was a good chance for me to buy something that I could work on, try to fix up and get running. So basically bought the car from them for $2,500. It was an automatic, the silver color. Got it shipped up to Maryland, where I live, from Georgia. And right away, changed the turbo. Uh, had an OEM replacement right there. Changed the turbo. Went ahead and drove the car for about 20 miles. Ended up overheating. And uh, I'm pretty sure that the head gaskets were blown when I originally took ownership of the car. So ended up overheating, spun a rod bearing, come back to the shop, set for about two or three months there. Uh, kind of when I decided what I was trying to do with the car. So after about two or three months, I ended up buying a block from IAG of stage two block. So it's still an open deck block and um, ended up getting my heads refreshed and um, you know, I had the engine out of the car, pretty much trashed the short block that was in it, just threw it away, and um, used the heads, sent them to IAG. Meanwhile, while all this was happening, I was gathering a whole bunch of performance parts to put this car together piece by piece. So, ended up going with a NVIDIA big tube header, uh, BCP X400 turbo, parent turbo inlet, APS 70 millimeter in, uh, intake, uh, APS 525 front mount intercooler, uh, ID 1000 injectors, 8AN fuel lines, I believe, um, all kinds of good stuff. So got the car all back together in a matter of, I don't know, three or four months. Ended up uh, driving the car a little bit, got a base map from IAG, um, driving the car a little bit there for about a thousand miles to break in the engine. And then right when I got the break in, I wanted to get this car dyno to see what it could make. Right when I got to IAG, they informed me that this, uh, the transmission just wasn't capable of making the power that I wanted to put down. So originally I knew that was a problem, but I was fine with it and I wanted to just keep it below that number that they said the transmission would probably hurt itself at, which they told me was around 325, which I think that's about right. So about two weeks later, I get the call from IAG that they were about to put it on the dyno and they performed the boost leak test. And this car had a boost leak at the front mount intercooler. And um, I bought that front mount intercooler used so it was probably like that when I bought it, I'm not sure. But they ended up saying that they wouldn't help me fix it. They uh, decided that I had to come pick the car up, fix it myself, bring the car back. So ended up doing that. Well, ended up driving over there, getting the car back, driving it back home. Meanwhile, this is a two hour drive each way, so it's kind of a hassle. Get the car back to the shop. Uh, I basically take the whole front bumper off, front everything off the front end to get to the front mount intercooler there's like a little tiny hole in it which is where the boost leak was ended up putting jb weld on it and it's still holding till this day but um yeah so i ended up putting jb weld on it but at the time i was kind of being slacking with everything and i was really interested in the forester sti stuff so i called my local importer ended up having this front end in stock and i was only about an hour and a half away so i'm saved from paying the shipping prices so ended up going over there, buying the front end. Then I decided about a month and a half later, after I had the front end, that if I wanted to make any kind of real power, I should just go ahead and six speed swap the car and get that over with. So ended up going back to the importer about two or three months later, getting the whole transmission, the six speed transmission, the axles, hubs, Brembo's, subframes, steering wheel, gauge cluster seats, I mean, anything that he had from that car from Japan, I ended up buying. So then get back home, get the whole entire transmission swapped under the car. That was a lot of work, but we ended up getting it done. Uh, a couple of my buddies helped me out with that. So shout out to them. And um, <clears throat> yeah, then I basically decided, well, if I'm going to do a six-speed swap, 
I might as well make more than 350 horsepower. So I ended up selling a lot of the parts that I previously bought and gathering beefier parts that were capable of making more power. So I ended up going with a Force Performance Black Turbo with the inlet ID 1300 injectors. Um, I got some different headers because my headers were all one piece and I wanted to have a header and a pipe set up to where I could run external wastegate. So I ended up doing that. I ended up getting all the exhaust parts ceramic coated. So I got all that done, got everything back together with the engine and I have pictures, so I'll put them in the video as we go along, but dropped the engine back in the car, all completely ready to go. Besides the fact that I didn't uh, have any of the wiring done for the transmission swap. So I had the clutch bled out, I had the clutch pedal in, had all the transmission parts in, the car was just a roller basically, but it wasn't wired for the manual transmission. So I called Andrew Tech Automotive over in Gaithersburg, Maryland, seen on Gears and Gasoline that they did his Forester swap wiring, so I figured that that was probably the best place for me to take my car at the time. So I ended up uh, not really having a great experience with them, but that is going to be a whole other topic for another video. Ended up getting the car back after about three months. They went through it, got the, all the wiring done, uh, ran into a couple issues as well, but we won't get into that. And um, they basically dyno tuned the car. The car made 470 wheel horsepower and 440 foot pounds of torque. So I was pretty happy with that. I was planning on trying to get to 500, but I was told I need uh, cams for that, camshafts to make that happen. And it probably wasn't a great idea on the stock uh, valves and retainers and all that stuff in the heads so but all in all i'm happy with the 470 horsepower 440 foot pounds of torque but yeah that's pretty much it for the car what's been done so far um i have a couple other pieces that are going to go on the car it doesn't have side skirts on it right now i have them in the car it doesn't have the facelift mirrors on them which have the turn signal on the bottom that i really like i have them in blue I have the side skirts in blue, and I also have the smooth um, door trim panels in blue. So that's all gonna go on uh, here in the next couple weeks whenever I get these panels in. They're getting shipped to me right now. But yeah, then hopefully the plan is to maybe put the car on bags, get the fenders rolled so I can slam it whenever I get to a parking lot. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna um, go around the car, get a couple shots of it, and uh, get some under the hood shots and all that stuff and then we'll go ahead and show you all the rollers Hands up in the sky 
Yeah.